Thank you, Patricia. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar, Financing Your Home Purchase. Terry and I are excited to um, have you join us today. This is the second part in a three-part series on home buying. And uh, of course, home ownership is a part of the American dream, and it's a big step. So the more you know, the more informed of a decision you can make um, about buying a home. Um, Terry and I are located up in the Panhandle of Florida. And if you're not familiar with Extension, uh, we are part of the University of Florida. We're under the Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, IFAS, and we have an office in every county in the state. So UF is throughout the state. We provide research-based information and educational programs to county residents on a wide range of topics. We cover agriculture, um, natural resources, lawn and garden information. Terry and I do programming and family and consumer sciences, so we cover home buyer education, housing, money management, nutrition, food preservation and food safety, and then the 4-H program is part of Extension. So we are all throughout Florida, um, part of the UF family. Um, so today what we're gonna be covering is um, we're gonna be talking about um, your different mortgage options. So um, we're gonna be talking about uh, searching for your mortgage, you know, what are things to look for, uh, how to find different types of mortgages, um, we'll talk about the, the different types of mortgages that are available for homeowners or home buyers. We also will cover questions to ask when choosing a mortgage. Um, getting a mortgage is a big step financially, so it's important to make a wise decision. So we'll go over some things to ask so you can make um, good choices for your particular situation. We also will talk about construction loans, how those different from a regular mortgage. And then we'll wrap up with some special programs that are available here in Florida for first-time home buyers. Now, it's important when you're searching for a mortgage to um, you know, do your homework and compare. Um, even if a difference of a percentage point can make a huge difference in the overall cost of the house as well as your monthly mortgage payment. So it's important to shop and compare your different options. Um, think about the factors of your situation, yeah, your family size, your job, your long-term and short-term goals. Um, those are important and as you look at your different mortgage alternatives. And then um, one thing that is important to remember is oftentimes when you take out a mortgage with a lender, oftentimes that lender will sell your mortgage to us on a secondary market to a mortgage buyer. So typically your smaller lenders like banks, credit unions, will sell the, um, your loan to lots of the larger national banks, such as Bank of America, um, Wells Fargo, and J.P. Morgan Chase. So um, if you find that your mortgage is sold, don't worry. The terms of your mortgage do not change. They remain the same. So the interest rate, payments, and whatever remain the same is what was originally um, approved with your uh, original mortgage lender. Um, but you'll just send your payments to someone different. And there are different sources for mortgages. So we have savings and loan associations. Um, banks are a common source of mortgages. You also have independent mortgage brokers. And these are companies or entities that for a fee will take their mortgage application information and broadcast it out to their network of lenders. So they may have connections with lenders in California. So there may be a lender out there that approves your mortgage. You've never heard of the lender, but they will approve your mortgage. So um, it broadens your pool. But again, oftentimes these um, entities will charge a fee for helping you find a mortgage lender. And then you also have credit unions. Many of the credit unions have mortgage um, products available. So as you're starting out in your mortgage search, um, you might want to start with where you currently do your banking, see what kind of um, loan products they have available. And um, then they have some special offers for current customers. So start basically start at home and see what's available. And then you can go out on from there. Okay, let's move one side too far. So now Terry's going to talk about some different types of mortgages. Thank you, Judy. So we're going to go over a couple different kinds of mortgage products that are available. So the first one is a conventional mortgage. And this one is open to pretty much anyone. Um, this loan is made by a private lender, so it's not insured or guaranteed by the federal government. So you have a lot more flexibility with it. Um, you can have higher loan amounts and smaller down payment requirements um, may be considered with a conventional loan that might not be considered with some of the other loan products that we're going to talk about today. 
So if you are looking at a conventional mortgage um, and you decide that you want to put less than 20% down, they might also require you to obtain private mortgage insurance. This is an additional fee that's going to help protect them in case you default on your loan. Um, and it's an additional fee that goes on to your mortgage payment, but it can be removed um, at 78% to loan to value. So once you pay your mortgage down to 78% of what you bought, um, that fee can be taken off. Um, with conventional mortgages, though, you are looking at a credit score requirement starting around 620, and depending on um, the lender, that can vary a little bit. Um, and the higher your credit score, the lower the interest rate that you're going to be able to obtain. All right, next one, Judy. Thank you. So the next one is a, a Federal Housing Administration insured loan, an FHA loan. So this is one of the easier loans to qualify for. Funding is provided by some of the same lenders but it is insured by the federal government. Um, they do limit how much of the property value that they'll put. So there is a minimum of a three and a half percent down payment that you have to make. Um, and the loan amount itself may be capped. So you may not be able to purchase a home that is a higher priced home than that cap. Um, there are no limits on family income and there are no subsidies on those monthly payments. And the next slide, um, here you see advantages and disadvantages for the FHA loans. So again, it allows for a lower down payment. You're looking at like three and a half percent. The lower minimum credit score, so it starts at 580 versus the 640 for the conventional loan. Some closing costs can be financed into the loan and there are no prepayment penalties, meaning that you can help pay it off by paying towards the principal, pay it off sooner and save a little bit on those interest charges. Again, the disadvantages, you've got that cap on how much house you can purchase. So if you're looking at a home that is more than the maximum loan amount here, you may not qualify for that FHA insured loan. Um, they do require mortgage insurance premiums though for the life of the loan. So this is again, a type of mortgage insurance that's gonna go on there and it's an additional fee that'll be in your mortgage payment. And unfortunately it does not drop off. So like with the conventional loan, you can drop it off at that 78% loan to value with an FHA, it's gonna be there for the life of the loan. So it's gonna to add to your overall cost. All right, the third one we wanna look at is a VA loan. So they do not provide the loan directly, they work with um, lenders. So it provides mortgage insurance for low and no down payment loans but it is limited to eligible veterans. So active duty personnel, unmarried surviving spouses, and the loans are provided by local lenders. And we do have a link here that we'll drop into chat. Um, so if you're interested in how to apply for a VA loan that you can look at the, the requirements that are there. Um, similar to FHA, the loan doesn't come from the VA, but it provides that insurance. And on the next slide, we've got some advantages and disadvantages here. There we go. Um, so again, because uh, the um, insurance is there, you have the option of having a no down payment loan. So you could actually finance 100% of the, the mortgage. The VA itself does not have a credit score requirement, but the lender who is providing the loan might have a credit score. So that's something to look into. There is no maximum land value to loan amount and there are no prepayment penalties. Um, some of the disadvantages, again, like we talked about, non-veterans are ineligible. If you are opting for a no down payment loan, that does mean you are assuming a larger amount of debt. So you're going to have larger monthly payments going to that. Um, if you do decide to make a down payment, um, any of your closing costs that you have to pay, uh, if you're buying down points, anything like that, those cannot be borrowed. They must be paid in cash from your own funds. So that is another requirement that the VA has on those loans. All right, and the fourth one here is the USDA Rural Development Loans. So these loans, sometimes are direct financing, sometimes it is a guarantee. This allows to purchase uh, individuals to purchase rural property. Um, if they are considered low or moderate income applicants. So the family income can't exceed more than 115% of the median income for the area, and they have to personally reside in the home. So it has to be their primary residence among other requirements that they have. And we have a link for the USD as well. So if you're looking at those, 
that you can find specific information. Um, we do have a Dropbox link. I don't know if it's gone out yet, but once that goes out, there are actually a couple fact sheets about USDA loans in there that um, can give you more specifics on a couple of their loans options. All right, some of the advantages for the USDA loan, the interest rate and the payment will fluctuate or vary with the household income. They have low closing cost and they can work with your loan terms to allow for a longer repayment period than you might find with some of the other loan products. Some of the disadvantages, again, you have to be in a rural development area. So um, there is a map that you can find on the USDA website and we looked at it to try to give you guys a copy, but it's, it's a little bit light colored. So it's easier just to put in where you're looking at purchasing. Um, but if you're in an urban area, that is not considered a rural development, then you wouldn't be able to qualify for this loan. And again, you do have that income eligibility requirement. All right, so the next thing we wanna talk about is the different types of mortgages based on how their interest rates are. So we've got long-term fixed rate mortgages, you will hear them re referred to as FRM. Those could be 30 year, uh, 15 year loan bi-weekly or interest only. There are adjustable rate mortgages, ARMs, and um, looking at a balloon reset or refinancing your mortgage. So for the fixed rate mortgages, you've got a, a interest rate that is going to be locked in for the life of your loan. So you whatever the interest rate is, it's going to usually be based on your credit score and how much you're financing. Because you have a fixed rate loan that does protect against inflation, so your set payment is going to be the same for the actual loan amount for the life of the loan. Now, your taxes may increase or decrease, your insurance may change, and that could change your monthly payment a little bit, but the actual um, mortgage portion of your payment is going to be fixed. So this does protect against interest rate increases. So even if the interest rates double, your interest rate on your loan will stay the same. And then as long as there are no prepayment penalties, um, if you do make prepayments, that does allow you to shorten the term of the loan and pay less interest. So that is one of the advantages here. Um, some of the disadvantages of having a fixed rate loan is that if the interest rates were to decline, um, you would not be able to take advantage of that without refinancing. And that does mean additional costs, um, like closing costs and things like that. So with the fixed rate loan, um, you do tend to have a higher interest rate. So that may also mean that you qualify to purchase less house based on what you're available. Um, private mortgage insurance is also required unless you have a down payment of 20% or more. Um, and again, that's something that we talked about earlier can drop off. All right, so your fixed rate mortgage, you can have a 30 year fixed rate, a 15, a biweekly, um, or an interest only. So this is a breakdown a little bit of those different points. So with the 30 year fixed rate, that's where you're gonna have the lowest monthly payment across the life of the loan. Um, your interest bill is gonna be much higher though because of how long you're financing that home purchase for. The interest amount that you can deduct though is higher. Um, but And because you have that 30-year rate, uh, the interest rates do tend to be higher than with a 15-year fixed rate loan. With a fixed year fix, 15 year fixed rate, sorry everyone, um, you do build that equity and you're debt-free quicker, obviously, than with a 30-year because you're paying it off in half the time. Um, so your overall interest um, bill is going to be lower. Interest rates tend to be lower but your monthly payments are higher. And then based on your monthly payments being higher, that does mean you may qualify for less for a smaller house due to those higher payments when you're looking at your debt to income ratio and the other housing ratios. All right, and then a biweekly fixed rate mortgage, basically they'll take a, a 30 year fixed rate loan and they're gonna split up so that you're gonna make payments every two weeks instead of monthly. Um, this does speed up the time it take or the, the payment cycle. So you will shorten your loan to about 25 years um, and it reduces the total interest that you're gonna pay on your loan, but they may actually charge you a service charge for this. So one thing to look at if you're considering a biweekly fixed rate mortgage is how much is that service charge gonna be and how much would you save in interest by paying it biweekly? 
And is that savings could be enough to cover that, that service charge? Or can you just do other prepayment methods um, without having to have the biweekly fixed rate mortgage? And then for the interest only fixed rate mortgage, um, you've got two principal payment terms. So you're gonna be paying just interest to start with. And then after a certain period of time, you'll be paying your interest and principal payments. So that does give you lower monthly payments initially, but you're not gonna be building up any equity. So this is something that most people look at only if they're gonna be in their house for a short time or they're intending on selling um, before those payments start coming up. So they'll have that lower payment. They're just paying on the interest. Um, or if, if it's a financial situation where they need to have that lower payment at the beginning. Okay, um, now the other type of mortgage is an adjustable rate mortgage, uh, frequently referred to as an ARM. Um, these are also called variable rate loans, adjustable rate loans, or adjustable mortgage loans. And unlike the fixed rate mortgage where the interest rate stays the same, with an adjustable rate mortgage, the interest rate can move up or down throughout the life of the loan, which can cause a change in your monthly payments. Now, also the loan term and or the principal, which is the amount that you initially borrow from the lender to buy the house, that can change. Uh, particularly if interest rates go up and your monthly payment isn't keeping up with that, they may add the interest onto the principal. And so it's, it's, it will increase what you owe as well as how long it takes to, to pay the loan off. Typically with an adjustable rate mortgage, it will start lower with an initial fixed rate period. And then it moves to a variable rate after a certain time. Um, so typically, if we're looking at, um, say, if you see at the five slash one, that means you pay a fixed rate for five years. And then at the end of that five year period, once a year, the interest rate will adjust. And again, it could be up or down depending on what the market conditions are. Now, there are certain caps that can be imposed on the loan which protect the borrower. So the periodic rate cap limits how much the rate can change at any one time. And so these are usually annual caps or caps that prevent the rate from raising more than a certain number of percentage points in any given year. Like you can't go up more than say than 2% or whatever the cap might be. Then there's a lifetime cap, which limits how much the interest rate can rise over the life of the loan. So this gives you kind of a best and worst case scenario. What would be the highest interest rate that can be charged on this loan and what would that make your payment, what would your payment then be? And then there's also a payment cap. And this is offered on some adjustable rate mortgages. And then the amount of the monthly payment can rise over the life of the loan in terms of dollar amount rather than a percentage, a change in the percentage point. So it can only go up, say, a little more than $100 or $200 or whatever it might be. So this is in dollar amounts rather than in percentages. Now, the advantages to an adjust rate mortgage is the initial interest rate is lower than the fixed rate. So anywhere from one to four percentage points lower than a fixed rate, the interest rate on a fixed rate mortgage. Um, as such, the monthly payments start out smaller and it's easier to qualify for an ARM. If the interest rates fall, then your interest, your interest rate on your loan also falls. So that's why you're saving money on interest without having to refinance the loan. And when you refinance the loan, it's kind of like buying your house all over again. You have a lot of the same closing costs you had the first time around. So you get the lower interest rate without the um, having to refinance. However, if depending on where the market, what the market is doing, if interest rates are rising, your loan payments and your loan rate and your monthly payments will also go up. Um, if you decide that you, you find that you can't keep up with the rise in interest rates, you, the payments are too much, then you'll have to look into refinancing, which adds costs, you know, the additional costs as I just mentioned. And there's also a slower buildup of equity in your home. Equity is the cash value. So you take the amount that you borrowed, what you borrowed, subtract what you paid off, um, and then the difference is, you know, it's what you owe and the difference is your cash value and equity. So with an adjustable rate mortgage, it can build up more slowly. And typically if you're adding to the principal, um, so it's that's a, a drawback to those adjustable rate mortgages. Um, just a little side note, adjustable rate mortgages came out back in the early 80s. Um, back then interest rates and mortgages were 20%, which is just hard to fathom. Um, and so lenders came up with this product where um, borrowers to take advantage of a lower interest rate without having to refinance. Well, as interest rates have gone down over the years, 
Um, you know, we you get a low fixed rate, then you're locked in, you don't have to worry about interest rate changes. And of course, you know, in the news lately, there's been a lot about interest rates and the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to curb inflation. So when those in when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, that affects everyone and the cost of borrowing. Now, balloon reset refinance mortgages are another loan product. And this is a loan which is figured on a 30-year payback period, but in usually um, you pay a certain amount for five or seven years. And then at the end of that term, your payment balloons up. So you owe either the balance due on the note or you owe a, a significantly larger payment. And um, so with this, you don't have to requalify um, to if you decide to refinance. And so you have the option of either paying the balloon payment or refinancing the loan into, say, a fixed rate mortgage. Um, with the balloon repayment, the reset mortgage, um, you don't have to requalify for the loan in order to refinance, but you certain conditions that you must meet in order to refinance. I'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, the type of borrower that usually looks at a balloon mortgage is one, who, it's someone who plans to sell the house before the balloon comes due. So say you're, I don't, you plan to live in the house, say for three years, and you have a five-year balloon. Okay, I'll sell the house, pay off the mortgage, and I've already, I've taken advantage of a lower interest rate for the time that I've had the house. Um, so it, you save over pay, having a regular 30 year fixed rate mortgage. However, um, if you have some changes to your financial situation, maybe you had a job loss, a job cutback, a job change, or maybe you're making less money, maybe there's been some medical bills in your family, um, just different things, like illness and other things that come up. Um, it may make it harder for you to qualify to refinance into a new mortgage. Also, if you've been late on some of your payments, or if you've had a lien placed on your property, say for unpaid taxes or for construction work or whatever, you may not be allowed to refinance. The lender may say, no, I'm sorry, we won't let you refinance. And then you've got to come up with that money that is owed on the balloon. Um, also, interest rates can be higher at the time of refinancing. And of course, if you're turned down for a refi, um, or you have to pay closing costs and under fees, that's going to add to the cost. Plus, just the stress of having knowing that balloon payment is coming. So, um, typically, balloon mortgages are not for everyone. If you plan to stay in your house long term, then um, the balloon mortgage probably is not the best choice. Okay, and Terry's going to um, share some about the shopping for a mortgage. All right. So at the beginning, Judy talked about um, making sure that you shop around. If you don't shop around, it can cost you. So there's a Dropbox link that went out. There's some handouts in there on the rural development. There's the chapter five for the um, My Florida Home book that's in there. And the one of the last pages in that book is a copy of what's on the screen here. It's a way to help keep track of different lenders. So you definitely want to shop around, get at least three quotes, if not more, when you're shopping. And this is one way that you can keep track of those numbers. So it gives you a place to put, obviously, the lender's information, but also information about, you know, the different types of mortgages available. Do they offer FHA, USDA, VA, things like that at different locations? What interest rates are you looking at? What's the APR? Um, you know, what kind of rate lock-in details do you have? Or how long will it be locked in for? Things like that. I lost the page. There we go. Okay. Um, and then also thinking about fees. So your fees can add up when you're shopping around. So one lender might charge you no application fees, or it might be $30. Someone else might charge you $300, you know? So you want to keep track of those as well when you're trying to figure out which is the best lender for you to go with. All right. So as you are shopping around um, and once you've decided on, you know, a lender or you're looking at different products, this is a loan estimate. And there are copies of this in, in the folder as well. So you can look at it in more detail because it's more than just the one page. But it's basically an estimate of the cost to purchase the home. So at the top, it's going to tell you um, the loan term, what product you're using, um, if you have any kind of like conventional VA, FHA loan what your loan amount you're looking at is, what your interest rate is, what the expected monthly principal and interest portion of your mortgage payment will be, um, if there's prepayment penalties, 
Um, also then looking at projected payments, you know, how is it going to look, you know, in the first few years, maybe the next few years, what kind of closing costs are you looking at? And then this is again an estimate. So the amounts on the page will change over time, especially as more information comes in. All right, and then the next page looks very similar, but at the top you'll see it says closing disclosure on it. Um, so this is where you've kind of locked in everything. You've given the bank all the different information. So this is something you're gonna receive prior to your closing. You'll have to receive it three business days or 72 hours prior to closing and you acknowledge that you receive it. And you wanna make sure that you read through every bit of this and that it makes sense to you. If anything doesn't look right, whether you, you know, the, the due date for your monthly payments isn't right, or you need to have that changed or something's not adding up, contact your lender right away. Because if you do need to have something changed, you wanna have it changed prior to getting to the closing at the, um, either with your attorney or, or wherever that's located because they can't really change anything at that point. So read through this and make sure it makes sense. If you have any questions, talk to your lender. And then these are some of the questions to ask when you're going through and looking for a mortgage. So the first part talks about points. So discount points are a form of interest which is paid up front at closing. So each point that you pay for is gonna equal 1% of the loan amount. And that's going to lower your APR, um, your annual percentage rate, one-fourth of 1% 1 on the interest rate for a 30-year fixed rate loan. So asking about points is something to look at. Um, if you're looking at a 30-year fixed rate loan, paying down points to have a lower interest rate can save you a lot of money in the long run. Um, knowing what the annual percentage rate is, so that is going to be it's going to consider all the cost of financing. So it's going to include interest, discount points, mortgage insurance, et cetera. And it's going to look at what that is over the life of the loan. So this really helps you to compare, you know, what this product looks like compared to the next one and the next one. So if you're looking at it across the board and trying to see where you can get the best rate. Um, obviously asking where they're going to, you know, how long they'll lock in the interest rate for. Um, it could be a set period of time and you might be able to pay to have that extended, especially if you're looking for a home and it's harder for you to find something. Um, there's been times where the market where if the homes hit the market and then like they're, you know, getting a contract that day, if it's really hard to find a home, you might need a little bit longer time to shop around. Um, application fees, closing costs, what are those? Are there any prepayment penalties? Um, asking if the loan is assumable is something that's also important. So fixed rate mortgages are rarely assumable, but you can definitely ask. And this makes, um, you know, if you do have one that's assumable, then that makes it easier for the next person who's buying your home to uh, to take over that mortgage. Okay, and then also asking about late payment charges. And then if you do have an adjustable rate mortgage, there are some additional questions to consider. So um, is the in initial interest rate discounted? And if so, when will and how will the interest rate change? So a lot of times they'll offer a very low interest rate to start with to attract borrowers. And then that rate will change over time. So if you're looking at, you know, comparing different rates, you'll want to look more at the formula of what your rate is going to be later on than your initial rate, because that, that could just be like an introduction rate. Um, how often can the interest rate and payment amount change? And then another important thing is what is an adjustment index and when is it used? So the interest rate, um, there's a couple different indexes that they can use as far as looking at the mortgage and you'll want to see which one they're using and which one will work best for you. And there is a complete description of that and what the different rates are or different index, indexes um, in that chapter five that's in the handouts that we talked about. So if you do have more questions about that, we can go back to it. Um, asking about the margin. Um, what are the periodic lifetime and payment rate caps? So there are some caps that says, you know, your interest rate can't go up over a certain amount, um, things like that, knowing what those caps are. And then um, looking at is negative um, amortization possible, if that's something else that can come about. And then if you are looking at building a home versus buying a home that's already been built, you're going to be looking at construction loans. So construction loans means you're going to have two loans. You're going to have the construction loan that pays your contractor, helps cover the cost of building supplies, things like that. And then you have your home mortgage. 
So if you have two loans, you're gonna have additional out-of-pocket costs. And you may have additional requirements that a person who's buying a home um, that's already built doesn't have. So things like having a copy of the house plans, specifications, copies of the contracts with your contractors. Um, you'll also want to determine who's going to be paying for things like the electric line to the property, the well, the septic tank. Is that something that you're going to need to budget for into your, your, your construction loan, or is that something that's included into the contract with your contractor? So that's something to consider if you're building your own home. Okay, ready? Yep, we're good. Okay. All right, we're moving to special programs that are available. And the number of programs out there that are designed for first-time home buyers. I'm um, here in Florida, we have several programs available. So I'm going to um, take you to a website or show you um, screenshots of a web website to give more information on this. So Florida Housing Finance Corporation administers a lot of special first-time home buyer programs and down payment assistance programs here in the state. So their web address is floridahousing.org. So to find out more about the programs, you see here you're going to um, go into programs on the top bar there, click on home buyer, and that drop down menu will pull up the home buyer program wizard. And this is the landing page, part of the landing page for that home buyer wizard. And there is a program that Florida Housing offers called First Time Home Buyer Program. This program offers a 30 year fixed rate first mortgage loan for first time home buyers. And this is available to participating lenders throughout the state of Florida. And I'll show you where to find those lenders in just a moment. Now, to find out um, programs and lenders for the particular county that you're interested in purchasing in, if you go further down this home buyer wizard page, You'll see there a place to um, put the number of people in your household. So it's a drop down menu and then the county where you're looking to purchase in. So um, I pulled up um, the information for Alachua County. So for a family of four in Alachua County, these are the different down payment assistance programs that are available um, for qualified borrowers and depending on if they meet the qualifications for that particular program. With some of the down payment assistance programs, there is a payback requirement. There's, it's, it's called no forgiveness. So if you sell or um, move or if you pay off the loan, you will have to repay your down payment assistance funds back to the program. There are other programs where the down payment assistance is forgiven. If you live in the house for so many years, then they will prorate uh, and eventually sunset that um, down payment assistance. Um, so you won't, if you sell or move, you will not have to repay it back to the county or to the program. Now to expand a little bit on the SHIP program, some of you may have heard of SHIP. SHIP stands for State Housing Initiatives Partnership Program. It's a program here in Florida. It was started back in 1993, so it's been around a while. And it, um, one of the main features of the SHIP program is that it provides down payment and closing cost assistance the first time home buyers. And a first time home buyer for SHIP purposes is defined as someone who's not owned a home in the last three years. Now, sometimes exceptions can be made if a couple owned a home and they divorced and maybe your ex got the house or maybe in the divorce settlement, um, you sold the house and divided the proceeds equally. I and mean, now you don't have a house. Um, sometimes exceptions can be made and you can qualify for SHIP under those circumstances. Now, with the SHIP program, each county receives a minimum of $350,000 a year from the state. They have a trust fund in the state that provides funding for this. Some larger metropolitan areas receive more money. Also, in some counties, certain city municipalities will receive a separate pot of SHIP funds for use within their city limits. So, um, depending on how the, um, the setup, each Ship, each committee has a SHIP advisory committee, which is made up of realtors, builders, lenders, and other community representatives. And they draw up a plan known as a local housing assistance plan, or an LHAP, that will help them help to benefit the citizens of that county in the best way possible. That's the goal of the LHAP. So um, the state gives the county certain guidelines they have to follow, but they also give the county some flexibility in how they set up their SHIP program because there are differences in, among the counties. So um, as said, you may, as you look into this program, you may say here, well, this county gives more per applicant than this county, or this county over here 
doesn't have a song of a, a re living requirement, you, you can um, download it in their song before you have to pay the money back. So there are differences among the counties. Now, once the ship committee draws up the LHAP, they present it to the Board of County Commissioners. The commissioners can modify the plan, and once they approve it, it is filed with the state. Now, um, the SHIP program has different what are called strategies or ways that the SHIP funds can help people um, with the housing assistance. Um, one of the most common is purchase assistance. So this is down payment and closing costs. They allow a certain amount to cover that. And for many people, you know, the monthly payment is not an issue. It's a down payment and closing costs. They can be an obstacle. So the SHIP program helps to fill the staff. Um, some counties also allow some of their purchase assistance, some of those funds to be used to make minor repairs to the house. In general, the SHIP program does not allow you to purchase a fixer upper. They don't want you living in substandard housing or having to have a major outlay of money to bring the house up to good living condition. So they usually require the house to be in good condition and meet current building codes. But you know, with any house, there can be some minor uh, repairs need to be done. So in some counties, they will allow some of the SHIP award to be used for minor repairs. Some counties also have funds allocated for rehab, and this is for current homeowners who maybe need help replacing the roof, replacing flooring, putting new windows in, things to make repairs um, for the stability and safety of the home. So those funds are available. And then in some counties, not in my county, our counties up here, they have what's called home replacement. And this is where the house is so badly deteriorated that it's not cost effective to repair. That applicant can apply for funds that will replace. They'll tear down the house and we build a new, new one for them so they can have their home replaced. So um, there are different strategies, different um, ways that the ship funds can be used. And the counties can also make changes kind of midstream in how they use those funds. Um, a few years ago when Hurricane Michael hit the panhandle, um, Jackson County was hit especially hard. And so for a couple of years there, all of the ship funds were diverted for rehab and repairs because that need was greater than down payment assistance. After the, the bulk of the repairs were made, they returned to allowing down payment assistance with the Jackson County ship funds. So, um, so it, it can vary and things can change depending on circumstances. Now, to find out more about the ship program in your county, and I um, want to mention whatever county the house you want to buy is located in, you apply for that county ship fund. So if you're living in Alachua County right now and you will decide you want to buy in Columbia County, apply for Columbia County ship funds. To find out who those people are, go back to the homepage on FloridaHousing.org, click on programs, click on special programs, then drop down there, you'll, you'll see the ship program, and then from there, go down to local government information. And I went ahead and pulled up the information um, here, I will show you how to get, get to that. So you can opt, you can click, select the city. If your city does not show up in the drop-down menu, then go over to the county and click on that. And here is the information for Alachua County. So you can see at the bottom the local government contacts for the SHIP program for Alachua. You can contact any of those persons for more information on eligibility, um, if you qualify, um, how the program works, or application procedures, et cetera. Um, also, you will see a copy of the um, county's LHAP, the Local Housing Assistance Plan. So you see there in that red circle, you can click there to see what types of assistance there are provided. Um, it's also a link there to see if you qualify um, income-wise. So it's always a good idea to talk directly with the SHIP administrator um, to find out if you're eligible. And many of the SHIP programs of SHIP counties in the state require completion of a home buyer education class, which Extension teaches in many of the counties. We also have an online class available through teams. That, um, so we are a head approved housing counseling agency. So um, with that, if you complete the class, and that usually satisfies the home buyer education requirement for the SHIP program in, uh, in the counties throughout the state. So. Um, that is one program that's been very popular. It's really helped a lot of people get into a house. And um, it's, it's really made a difference in helping people build wealth and having housing stability. And then the last thing I want to mention is predatory lenders. And these are rather unscrupulous lenders that use unfair or abusive lending terms. 
Um, usually they are fraudulent, deceptive. They use unfair tactics to try to get homeowners into loans that they cannot afford. And so they may fail to disclose information or they may tell you incorrect information about the loan. And they may charge higher interest rates or fees. Um, and usually elderly and low income persons are the usual victims. So the goal of a predatory lender is to have the debtor, the buyer, default on the mortgage. So they get your house and they turn around and sell it and get money for it. Now, um, some warning signs of predatory lenders. One is they have a, a stipulation on the loan of a prepayment penalty of five years or longer. A prepayment penalty is on some loans in which if you pay the loan off, say, within two years, um, then you have to pay, you pay a penalty because the lender is not getting that interest from the loan because you paid it off sooner. If a lender requires you has a prepayment penalty um, period of five years or longer, that's usually a sign of a predatory lender. Also, if a lender requires that you have private, requires credit life insurance premium, um, this is a credit life insurance. It's a type of insurance in which the beneficiary is a lender that the policy holder owes money to. So if you get a credit life insurance policy on your loan and you die with an outstanding balance, the debt benefit can only be used to pay off the balance of the loan. It can't be used for anything else. So if the lender requires you, and credit life insurance is not required, but if the lender requires you to have this, and um, they may add it to the mortgage loan amount. So you're borrowing, you pay for the credit life insurance, or you have to pay a big lump sum at closing. That's usually a sign of predatory lending. Also, another sign is if the lender does not report your mortgage payment history to credit bureaus. Um, reputable lenders will report your information if you paid on time, what you borrowed, your payment history to Equifax, Experian, and or TransUnion. And that factors into your credit score and your credit history for other lenders and then creditors. Um, if the lender does not report your mortgage information to the credit reporting agency, then that is usually a red flag that there's something fishy going on. So um, we wanted to share this information with you. There's a lot of, a lot of different loan options out there, but we also don't want you to get um, into something that is to your detriment. So we wanted to share this information with you. So with that, that is um, the end of what we have to say, but we'd like to open up the questions um, in the last little bit that we have the time we have left here. So if there are any questions, Patricia, I'll turn it over. I didn't here. see questions coming in through the chat. Um, we have dropped a link. Oh, actually they're starting to come in. Uh, real quick before we jump into that and before anybody leaves, uh, we dropped a link to our survey. So if you could take a couple of minutes to complete that. Um, the first question that we got, how common are repayment penalties nowadays? How common are repayment penalties? They're not very common. I think a lot of loans, um, the new loans do not charge a prepayment penalty, but on the loan information, um, the, the closing disclosure and your loan estimate, it should tell you if there is a prepayment penalty and if so, for how long. But I think a lot of loans now do not have those. The shopping around for mortgages to compare lender offers affect credit score. Okay, that um, with when you're shopping for a mortgage, um, you want to get a game plan and identify different lenders you want to contact. And the way they work it, um, with any any time you apply for a lender, you contact a lender and they pull your credit report. All of your credit report pulls within a thirty day window counts as one pull on your credit report. So lenders know that you're shopping around for, to get a good rate. So they're not going to penalize you by lowering your credit score every time you pull your report. But you need to do that within a 30-day window. If you um, pull one this month and then you wait a couple months and um, go talk to another lender, that's going to count as a separate pull, which can lower your credit score, which in turn can affect the interest rate that you'd be eligible for. Okay, the next question is for the SHIP program. Do you need to have the house first to qualify or do you apply ahead of purchasing? That varies from county to county. I know in my in Marshall County, um, we have to, they have to be pre-approved for a loan and have a home sales contract before they can apply for SHIP. Not every county apply, has that requirement. So um, I would contact the SHIP administrator for the county they, um, where the house is located in 
and find out what the requirements are for that particular county. Next question is, are there types of lenders that tend to be predatory, like independent mortgage, mortgage brokers? And for SHIP, is there usually an income cap? Uh, which, if there is an income cap, it's based on the median income for the county adjusted for the number of people in the household. So um, there are income limits. There are three income ranges, very low, low, and moderate. So depending on how your county is distributing their SHIP funds, they may be targeting, say, very low and low applicants. Others may also include moderate. So your SHIP administrator could kind of let you know what the income limits are to be eligible for SHIP. Um, for the predatory lending, um, you just have to be careful. You, you can look on the internet, but just, just beware of, you know, and, and you can also check better business bureau to see if there have been any complaints filed against a particular lender. Um, Terry, do you want to add on that? No, I don't have anything to add on that one. Um, yeah, like you said, re doing your research as far as reputable agencies and things like that. And then if there is, you do see any red flags, um, you're just making sure that you're, you're not just ignoring those. Okay, and the next question is, how far in advance should you speak with a lender before seeking to purchase a home? Okay, that's a good question. Um, if you, there are two things you can need prior to buying a house. You can get pre-qualified and pre-approved. Pre-qualifications where the lender will go in and um, you'll go in, you'll give your basic income and um, debt information. And they do not run your report, but they will um, kind of see, based on the information you provided, this is how much house you qualify for and this is the loan, loan amount you qualify for. Pre-approval takes it a step further where the lender runs your credit report and they conditionally approve you for a loan. Usually the pre-approval is good for about 120 days. So by being pre at the very least, pre qualified, you know what price range you're looking at. So that can save time when you are looking for a house. You can look for houses within your price range. Being pre approved also can give you uh, an advantage over someone who's not pre approved. So, um, example, we used our class and said, Terry and I are looking to buy Patricia's house, and Terry's been pre approved and I haven't. Patricia, who are you going to do business with? No one's pre approved. Right, because it's guaranteed, you know, Patricia knows that Terry can get credit and she can get a mortgage. She doesn't know about me, so why take a chance on an unknown when you have someone um, who has been pre who's been pre approved? So, it, by being pre approved, you have a price range and you um, can have some bargaining power over someone who's not been pre approved. Uh, do we approach a lender with one type of mortgage in mind, or does the lender have influence on what mortgage types they're willing to offer? So, I mean, having a, a, a mortgage type in mind is helpful, so you know what you're looking for. So, you, for instance, if you're looking for a VA loan, knowing whether you qualify for that is, is important. Um, but sometimes you're going to have lenders who may not offer certain lending products. So, you might want a particular loan type and they might not offer it. Um, you might find that you have to you know, search around and find someone that offers the product that you have. Any more questions? Um, if someone has been pre-approved for a loan, why do many sellers tend to go with cash offers over those with loans? Um, sometimes with a cash offer, they can take a higher selling price, higher asking price, because when you're financing the mortgage through a lender, you cannot borrow more money than the house is worth. The lender's going to do an appraisal. And so, you know, when a, when a market, when a house is really, you know, in demand, if people can pay cash, it doesn't matter if the house is worth as much as what they're paying for, they're paying cash. So the lender's not going to loan more money than the house is worth because if you, you fall in your loan and they get your house back, they need to be able to sell it and get their money back out of it. And so if they've loaned you more than the out from the outset, they're going to take a loss. So um sometimes lenders or sellers can take a higher price because the lender, the buyer is not limited by a mortgage to paying cash. Uh, if you meet the qualifications for more than one first-time home buyer program, are any eligible to stack, so to speak? 
I don't know if you can stack them or not. I know with the SHIP program, it's an interest-free second mortgage on your house. So it's going to stay, it's going to be a second mortgage on the house. I don't know if you can stack different programs or not. Um, that's a good question. Discount points and point combinations were mentioned earlier. Can you elaborate? Okay, um, a discount point, um, it's very mentioned, it's usually 1% of the loan amount. So by, you can look to see if I paid one point at closing and that maybe I, my interest rate dropped a quarter of a percentage point, you can look to see what would be the overall cost of the house over the, the, the life of the loan versus say paying three points or paying no points. You can kind of crunch the numbers to see where, how you're going to come out ahead. So um, depending on what the initial interest rate is and how much points we buy it down to versus to maybe another loan product where with no points, the interest rate's the same or lower, it, it's kind of uh, crunching your numbers to see what the overall cost of that, you know, paying points or not paying points would be on the life of the loan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is there anything you want to add on that? No, I think you covered it. Yeah, I don't see anything else coming through. Um, so I dropped uh, in the chat the links where the recording will be uploaded for the webinar. We will also send an email out to everyone. Um, if not tomorrow, then on Thursday with the link to the recording and to our survey. And we'll include the... Um, you know, that the handouts and URLs and all that stuff that was shared today. So um, with that said, Terry and Judy, thank you so much for having joined us today and uh, shared all this information with us. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.